Hello and welcome. In this video, we will be talking about barriers, specifically about thread and process barriers. A barrier, again, is a simple tool that allows us to synchronize different threads or processes together. Think about them as being that starting line before the race, where every thread comes to that starting line, and then once they're all in position, we release them together. Let me show you what I mean with some diagrams and examples. Over here we have an example of a barrier that can support four threads, right? When you initialize one of these barriers, you specify how many processes or threads you want to support. In this example, we have four. So we have four threads or processes. They are executing their code in their own pace. Eventually, one of them will get to the code where it hits one of these barriers. In the code, thread number two in this example will hit the line which says barrier dot wait. When this happens, the thread is blocked. It is taken out of the execution. It waits for all the other threads to arrive at that same line of code, right? The barrier dot wait. And the internal count of the barrier goes down by one. In this example, we go down to three. Eventually, another thread will arrive to that barrier and it's also blocked, right, when it calls barrier.wait. And again, the count goes down by one. In this example, process or thread number three arrives next to this barrier. The barrier again is subtracted by one. And finally, process or thread number four again arrives at this barrier. The thread is blocked. It is taken out of the execution. And now because the barrier count is zero, the barrier releases all of these threads together and the count is reset back to four. So now these threads are free to continue with their execution. So as you can see, a barrier allows us to synchronize different threads or processes together. Let's have a look at another example, this time looking at it from a different point of view. We will see how long each thread spends in executing and blocked time when it's using one of these barriers. Here we have two threads. One of them is labeled with the red robot over here and the other one with the blue one. In this example, we are using a barrier of size two, right? Because we only have two threads. The red thread starts running until it hits the barrier, until it calls this barrier dot wait. Because it is the only thread that has called this barrier, it will be blocked for some time until another thread calls this function. In this example, the blue thread spends longer time running until it calls itself this wait function on the barrier. And now, because the barrier has two threads that have called this wait operation, they are both released and they continue running. Now that we have seen a couple of these examples, let's see another example, this time looking at the code. We will see a simple implementation of two threads synchronizing on one barrier. Over here, I have created a Python file called barrier example. I've put this under the barriers folder and we will use this Python file to show a very simple example of these barriers. So let's go ahead and start by creating a barrier object, right? So we say barrier is equal to barrier. And as an input, we give the number of threads that will be participating in this barrier. In this example, we will only use two threads. Let's import the barrier from the threading package. And next, let's create a function that will be called by each one of these threads. And this function will be called wait on barrier, taking in a number of parameters. The first parameter is the name of this thread, right? We will use this to print information on the console. And the second one is the time to sleep before we call this barrier. Inside this function, we start a loop, starting from i in the range of 10. And then in each iteration of this loop, we first print the name of this thread, and then we say it is running. We are going to fake that this thread is doing something. Instead, what it's going to do is just going to sleep for a number of seconds. So what we do is do time dot sleep, time to sleep. Okay, and we import the time package. Next, once we wake up from the sleep, we say print, the name of the thread again, and we say is waiting on barrier. 
just to show us that we are going to call the barrier.wait. And this is what we do in the next call. We do barrier.wait. As you can see over here, the barrier.wait in Python accepts an additional parameter, a timeout of type float. This timeout is used when you want to wait on a barrier on a fixed amount of time, right? If you put a value in here after that time has elapsed, the barrier will return whether it has unblocked or not. In this simple example, we are not going to specify a timeout, which means we will wait forever until this barrier is unblocked. Once we exit this loop, we are going to print name of this thread is finished. Next is just a matter of starting two threads and call these function each. The first thread, we are going to call it red. So we say red is equal to thread, and then we give it the target function, which in this case is called wait on barrier, right? The function that we have just written. And next we give it the two arguments. The first argument is the thread name, which we said we are going to call red. And the second one is the time in seconds that we are going to sleep. In this example, it is four. Here we need to import the thread from the threading package. And now we can do the same thing, right? We repeat this line, but this time we call it blue. And instead of four seconds, we are going to wait for 10 seconds, right? We are going to wait longer. We need to remember to start both of these threads, right? So we say red.start and blue.start. So let's have a look now at what happens when we run this program. As you can see, both red and blue start running. Red hits the barrier first, right? Because after four seconds, it calls the thread.wait. Next, the blue thread hits this barrier, right? It says blue is waiting on the barrier. When both of these threads hit the barrier, both of these threads are released again. And here we have blue and red running again. And this cycle repeats. Red goes back waiting on the barrier to wait for blue to arrive at that barrier again. And the cycle keeps on repeating for 10 times, okay? We don't need to wait for it to finish. We can stop the process. This is just to give you an idea on how barriers work, right? When both of the threads hit the barrier, both of the threads are released. Another operation that is available in Python on these barriers is a way to abort this waiting. So over here, we can do time.sleep eight seconds, right? We are going to sleep less than the blue thread before the blue thread calls the barrier.wait. And after we sleep for eight seconds, we are going to say aborting barrier. And then we call barrier.abort. Let's see what happens in this case when we run this program. You can see over here that both red and blue started running. Red hits the barrier first. And after eight seconds, we call the barrier.abort, which raises an exception, right? We, over here, you can see that we have aborted the barrier, we have printed aborting barrier, and then we get a broken barrier error. Once we have aborted a barrier, nothing else can use it. And in fact, over here, you can see that two seconds later, the blue thread has called barrier.wait. However, it has also thrown an exception. So that was an introduction on how we can use barriers to synchronize different threads together. What we will do in the next video is see a more complicated example so we can see how we can use these barriers to solve more difficult problems. So join me in the next video to see this.